It's Monday, and welcome back to the Joust About Careers podcast. This is the place to learn about careers from the people who are actually in the trenches every day. I'm your host, Brian Brott, and my guest today is Amanda Cusho, a 2010 Van Buren graduate who is a new model delivery project manager with Honda Manufacturing of Indiana. Amanda shares how a typical day looks in her career, how she isn't in the career she expected to have when in high school, the characteristics of people who excel in this field, and much more. Whether you are interested in a supply chain or manufacturing career, or are still exploring your options, I hope that what Amanda shares today will help all of you make better career decisions and have fulfilling career journeys. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Joust About Careers podcast. And today we have 2010 Van Buren graduate Amanda Cusho with us, and she works in new model delivery for Honda. So we're going to hear a little bit about what she does in the development of cars and how she allows all of us to have vehicles to drive. So Amanda, thank you very much for joining me today. And I'd love to hear to start out just what do you do as someone working in new model delivery? So my role is twofold. I am both a buyer and a project manager. So I will order parts for prototype events Um, That happen multiple times throughout a year. Um, Each one is separate for the different vehicle model. And this includes models that haven't hit the market yet and the new versions of models that are on the market. And then projects involve um, different things. I manage our costs. So all new model cost related items, all items related to our EDI, which is our system that transmits orders from one to another. So getting those set up and uh, ensuring those are set up. I also manage our Japan supply orders for our plant new model. So that involves ordering those from Japan, um, working with our OSL, which is one of our um, shipping and receiving to get those from Japan and then to the correct supplier from there or to our AF delivery. So a lot of communication uh, with a lot of different people and working with teams and so forth. So how many models would you estimate you work with, if, if that's okay to share that? It depends on the year. It's always different. Um, okay. Right now, we have two large projects we're working on. Um, but we also recently, so I work out of the Indiana plant, but I also took on responsibility for the Alabama plant, which adds probably five more models to my mix. Okay. So each plant has models that it's assigned. and. Yes those then are your focus because you're at those plants. Yes. Okay. So how often do you have to travel in this uh, position, whether it is just to Alabama or do you ever have to go to to Japan? How does all of that look in this position? I'd say pre-pandemic, I traveled 30%. Um, It's getting back up to that now. I was just gone all of last week, different places in Ohio, um, I haven't been lucky enough to travel internationally, but a lot of people I work with have. Um, I've gone all over the Midwest and then into the South in Alabama, t- Southern Tennessee. Okay. Um, there's a lot of automakers in this area, a lot of parts makers. Right, right. Now, is your position mostly hybrid or is it a 50-50 split? Are you in the office most days? How does that look in your type of position? So. My role currently is hybrid. So it's three days in the office, two days at home. And then, so, but our traveling days or PTO days are count, counted as in office days. So it's really nice and flexible. Okay. And then, okay. So when you were in high school, did you ever foresee yourself working in the auto industry? No. Uh, what were your plans when you were graduating? Um, at first I was looking at pharmacy and then I really, for a very long time, wanted to do occupational therapy. Um, and I guess then what, what happened that you (laughs) aren't doing those things because you went to the university of Toledo and earned a bachelor's degree in therapeutic recreation and recreational therapy. Yes. Uh, so would that have been related to the occupational therapy? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, 
that was the closest thing as an undergraduate degree that covered all the prerequisites for OT school. I took a gap year where I was working in healthcare, and that's when I decided maybe this isn't for me. Okay. So what advice would you have for high school students? Um, I, again, you know, this, I think most students say, I'm going to do this when I graduate from high school. And based on 95% of the conversations I've had with graduates, they don't end up where they thought they were going to end up. What advice would you have for students uh, to keep that open mind and realize that there might be opportunities out there that they're not aware of currently, uh, but still need to be open to pursuing those? I'd say keep an open mind is number one, but also like find something where you are, you feel happy or at least doing it brings you peace and it brings you balance. Okay. So with the occupational therapy through college, you thought, hey, I'm going to continue down this path, but then getting into the workplace, you changed your mind. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you don't need to get into specific specifics, but was there anything that was different or unexpected when you actually got into the workplace that sort of led you to the the realization that this was not where you wanted to spend your career? How do I phrase this? I feel like it is the um, upper management politics of healthcare that are sad. Okay. Uh, so difficult to maybe accomplish what you wanted to accomplish because of politics and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then that led you, it looks like, to go to uh, Bowling Green to earn mm -hmm. a master's degree in biz business administration and supply chain management. Uh, yeah. How are you utilizing that degree in what you're doing today? So I am in the supply chain department of Honda. So that involves a, with my buyer role. Okay. Um, so I utilize a lot of the skills that I learned there. Right. Is there any big, um, big idea that you took away from BG that is just the most valuable thing uh, based on what you're doing in today's workplace? They have a really excellent business program that gets you out meeting with the people that you're going to be working with. And even as a graduate student, I was able to do a couple of different internships and meet a lot of different people. They give you so many opportunities to network and they teach you to do that. And I think that has been the most valuable thing to me. Did any of those internships involve Honda or was that no. just, okay, so that was just by chance or, or was there any networking involved that helped? You land yeah. your role at Honda? It, yeah. So Bowling Green has a career fair, I think, twice a year in the fall and in the spring. And so I talked to Honda that fall. Um, I wasn't graduating yet. So they put you into a system. I have since been the recruiter on the other side of this. And then that gets, I think it flags when you're closer to your graduation date. So I had actually accepted a position from one of my internships that I was working at after graduation when I got my call from Honda. Okay. And uh, I notice you've done a few different things. You started out, I guess, maybe as like a, a product lead, et cetera. And technically, it looks like you're still doing that, but you've maybe yeah. just added a few things on top of it. Um, is it typical for someone starting out to get into a role like that? Or was were you a little higher up because you already had your master's degree and so forth? No, I, absolutely. Someone starting out can do that. We just have a co-op who's finishing this week, who is doing our role. And I think he's got hired to start after his last semester. Okay. It just depends on what their, what position is open at the time. Okay. How many people are there like you at the Honda plant that you're in in Indiana? The one I work at. So it's really interesting because when I started, there's probably 14 of us and now there's five. Okay. We've gone through a lot of restructuring. So it took, I had probably double the task responsibilities, but half the supply base. And now I have double the supply base and half the task <laughs> responsibilities. But um, I work with a really great team of people and we collaborate really well, which helps a lot. And then I, I don't know the exact number at Ohio, but I know Alabama has maybe seven or so people. Okay. In the same okay. position. 
How many Honda plants are there around the U.S.? In, in North America, there's Canada, Mexico, Indiana, a couple in Ohio, South Carolina, and Alabama. Okay. Okay. So mostly east of the Mississippi. Oh, and California. And California. Okay. A little <laughs> bit west of the Mississippi. <laughs> Just that uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if someone wanted to go into a career like this, um, you know, with supply chain, with a project, being a project manager, uh, obviously your master's degree has been very useful. What are some personal characteristics that people need to have to excel in this type of position? I feel like you have to be at least somewhat outgoing, at least in your work life. Um, you need to be good with people. Um, it doesn't hurt to be good with numbers, but I was never earlier. And you can learn that. Um, being able to adapt to new technologies and new systems. Um, Honda's systems are all proprietary and they're always changing. So you have um, to be flexible. flexible. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. And you have to be creative and strategic, especially when issues come up where you need parts and they're telling you they're not going to be there. Right. Right. So when we talk about a a car um someone designs it so engineers or whoever does that mm -hmm. and then your job is i have to help get the parts to the plants where these cars are going to be manufactured and then you know those parts are put together and a new car rolls off the assembly line how much I guess, how much time from beginning to end does that usually take? And again, I know, I'm sure there's a million different factors. And well, in this situation, it takes this long. And But I guess if you just a general number from beginning to end of the creation of a model for this car and then to a finished product rolling off the assembly line, is that six months? Is that five years? In general, what might that be? By the time it gets to me and the drawings are already done, it's several years after that. So we're working on models several years out. Okay. Okay. I can't, I can't tell you, I can't speak to, you know, how long from the drawings to us, but right, right. that timeline is probably at least two and a half, three years. Okay. Okay. So the cars we are driving or a new one sitting on the lot, it was probably conceptualized, you know, four or five, seven years ago yeah. to be able to be on the lot today for us to purchase. Okay. That's interesting. Um, I guess, are there any jobs at Honda that maybe are in high demand and, or maybe people just aren't aware of, because again, we think, well, there's engineers and, you know, there are supply chain people who get the parts and there's a CEO. Uh, is there anything that's maybe really going to be in high demand here in the upcoming years that, maybe people just don't know about or they don't think about as a potential career option? I don't know that people don't think about this, but my, I go to is IT. Somebody who is like really good in with like macros and coding. Okay. That's always useful. Okay. So probably not only at the corporate level of just all of that for the Honda company, but then I'm assuming individual cars they need people to write codes for the computers and the cars and in all of that as well. Would that be accurate? So that would take place at like the supplier who sells the software. Oh, okay. Okay. But so a lot of like internal systems that use and need, and then a lot of like line critical issues that need people who can troubleshoot them. Okay. And I'm guessing you have some robots that have to be coded uh, with assembly yeah. and, and so forth. Okay. Okay. So anything computer wise, makes sense, uh, is going to be in high demand both oh. now and in the future. And accounting. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's any, any reason why that is something you think will be in demand or it's just the, the buying and selling of vehicles. I mean, it just seems like something where you always need it, but there's not necessarily a high influx of it right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's good to know. As you think about living in Indiana, obviously you're not living in Van Buren any longer. Uh, is life in Indiana very different from life in Ohio or is it pretty similar? <laughs> so funny thing, I live in Cincinnati and I commute. <laughs> okay. So you drive over across the river every day and yeah. go, well, I know, I guess, do you cross the river or not? No, not no. Okay. You'd be going to Kentucky if you cross the river. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so you live in Cincinnati, commute to um, Indiana. How long of a commute do you have? It's an hour one way. Oh, geez. Okay, so you do have quite a commute. Okay. It's not too bad. Usually traffic's going the opposite way into downtown Cincinnati. Okay. And okay. I'm only going there three times a week, unless if I'm traveling that week. True, true. Good point. And if you're traveling, you're nice, probably nice and close to the Cincinnati airport that um, yeah. you can <laughs> hop on a plane and, and go from there. Okay, very cool. So as you think about your career and everything you've learned since you were in high school, um, I guess what's the biggest piece of advice you would give to yourself if you could go back and talk to yourself when you were still in high school? Don't put yourself in a box and focus in only on one idea of who or what you can be. Okay. And and I guess, can you explain that a little bit? What led you to that? I feel that at times I can have a very one track mind and it needs to be that or nothing. It's kind of an all or nothing, which is its own issue. But I think as <laughs> I've gotten older, become a lot more relaxed and a lot, I've ended up where I needed to be and it's okay. worked out for the best. Okay. And again, like you said, it didn't take a, it wasn't a linear path that, that yeah. worked out perfectly, but yet you still arrived where you feel like uh, you need to be and obviously accomplishing the purpose that you see for yourself. So that is obviously the ultimate goal for everyone, hopefully to achieve yeah. that purpose. So Amanda, I really appreciate you sharing about your career. Really appreciate uh, hearing about it because, again, it's one of those that we don't, it's not at the forefront of every student's mind that, oh, I'm going to go into supply chain and yeah. and help make sure cars are going uh, out into the economy and, and allowing people to buy them. So thank you very much for that and good luck as you continue sure. on your career journey. Thank you. Thank you for making the Joust About Careers podcast part of your day. I hope you learned valuable information from this career story. And to be sure you don't miss upcoming episodes, please click subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform so you'll know when the next episode is released. Thank you for spending a portion of your day with me. And as always, come back next week to learn even more just about careers.